what are the best practices to write a trigger the best practices mean yeah. initially we have to write entire logic in the handler instead of writing in the trigger itself mm -hmm. that's the first one and maintaining only one trigger for one object that's the second one and uh, avoiding dml operations and uh, uh, in the for loop and uh, queries in the for loop mm -hmm. So why we always need to write this, or we this comes under best practices to write one trigger per object. What if I write two triggers? Like uh, there is no guarantee at what time which trigger will fire. Okay, so you are not sure for the execution of the triggers, and for the yes. complex requirement, it may cause some unwanted results. Okay. Let's suppose if you have a you are given with a requirement, okay. So now how you will going to decide whether I should go with trigger or I should go with flow? Anything which you can think on this? What are the yes, points? Actually, yes, actually, yes, actually, trigger always uh, Salesforce always says that uh, we have to go from starting. Whether if it is possible by using the workflows, we have to go using workflows. Uh, if it is not possible, we have to check with uh, process builder. Even though it was not possible, we have to check it by using the flows. Uh, like that, the uh, development part is at last because even administrators also able to uh, modify flows but not the triggers. So at the time, we are able to prefer uh, flows instead of development triggers. What is read-only error in triggers? Okay, and also we are unable to, if you want to build some complex logics, we, we prefer a trigger instead of this because in flows it will be Yes. So that's why complex logic we will Yes, for the complex requirement, always try to go with triggers, okay? Because in future, when the number of data will increase in the database, then for the complex requirement for flows, it might be possible in future it can give us CPU limit exceed also, okay? Because flow take, uh, much more than time than the triggers for the execution okay and if already number of automation are working on same object then possibilities are greater then we in future client can get the cpu limit exceed error in flows okay so for the complex when always try to go with this uh triggers can you tell me about the read only error in triggers when we get this and why we get this what is its solution If we are trying to update a formula field, we will get the read only field. Yeah, kind of. at that time we will get the error that field is not writable, right? Yes. Yeah, field is not writable because that is read only. Okay. But in the trigger also, uh, I'm not sure in the after triggers, uh, we used to get this error. If we try to update our record status trigger dot new in after insert or update, if we try to perform any DML directly on this list of triggers, then we used to get this read only error. And to avoid this, we used to create an another instance of same object and then assign it with the ID and then update them. Have you ever faced this? Hmm. Okay, just have a look to this also. Okay, the read only error. Okay, what is batch apex? Batch apex is under asynchronous asynchronous apex. I think batch apex is nothing but uh, if you want to process the bulk data by means of uh, by using the DML operations, we have to proceed with uh, batch apex. Uh, the main purpose of the main mode of uh, using batch apex was uh, process the bulk records and uh, it, it will divide it into chunks. Okay. Yeah. Can, can we call batch from another batch? Yes, we are able to call from another batch by using the uh, in finish method we are able to call what if i, I try to call in ex execute or start method i think we are able to face an error because in execute method multiple times in, if you, in, yes yes uh, if, if it costs multiple times it will assure it you will get it yes okay and uh, we are also not be able to save our batch salesforce already gives us the error that you cannot call 
batch from batch uh, you cannot call it from finish or start method sorry in executor start method okay can we call any uh, apex class from batch apex like uh, we ha uh, i have one batch apex and one apex class simple apex class so can i call my apex class from batch apex i think it is possible yes we can able to call this okay okay so in batch apex in the start method we used to perform the query right we used to query out our record and pass it to the second method so in this start method can i perform any custom logic on this list of records custom logic means you want to update like i want to update uh, whatever the list i have received from this query i want to update it okay with some values so can i be able to do this and then up the updated list i want to pass it with second method Actually, in the start method, we are able to perform any actions. Actually, it is just for querying only. If you want to perform any actions, any kind of operations or deletions, we have to use execute method. Okay, we have to go to execute methods. Mm -hmm. What is database dot stateful in batch apex? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's say I have hundred records, and uh, I would like to uh, update how many records uh, in an integer. integer let's say uh, i took one parameter that was integer i would like to update how many records are available mm -hmm. uh, when i execute a batch apex uh, if i if i did use any stateful word it will uh, let's say uh, my batch size will be 10 mm -hmm. so it will execute 10 times when the when the when the chunk was executed it will restart again uh, if i didn't choose stateful but if i use full it will it will capture the previous chunk count also Okay, okay. Just to retain the values in different chunks, we're going to use this database dot stateful, right? Yes. Okay. Can we make callouts also from batch apex? Yes, I think we are able to call by using the batch apex by declaring LOS callouts. Okay. Database dot LOS callouts. And from triggers. I think by using the future method, we are able to perform the callouts, and we have to call the future method uh, in trigger. But I don't know exactly whether we are able to perform directly okay. by writing state. Okay, so directly from triggers, callouts are not possible. Okay, because trigger trigger used to run synchronously, and when we used to make the callouts for the response time, we are not sure. Okay. So in yes. this case, trigger might give us the error. So to avoid this, we'll separate, we'll we'll run this call out in the separate thread by using the asynchronous method. And for this, we can use the future method. Oh, okay. okay. Only uh, making it asynchronous. Only we can make the call out directly from triggers. Not possible. Okay. Okay. What are mixed DML errors? So DML errors. If you try to If you try to use DML operations, setup objects and non-setup objects, we will face the mix. So let me mention the rest. Mm -hmm. How we can avoid this? By using the future method, we are able to avoid this. So here again, using this future method, we are separating the thread. Okay. So this is how we can avoid the mixed DML. That is, the DMLs on two objects of setup and non-setup. Yeah, yeah, but I I read one article that we have to do any operations on setup objects uh, at a time, setup objects and non-setup objects at a time, even in future method. So even so, in future method, we again we cannot do the uh, operations on both the objects. So if you want to perform. Um, some modification of DML setup also and on non setup also like on user also and on account object also okay so you, either you have to use this user DML in future method or either use this account DML in future method for one of the object you have to use this in future method not both of them and one object in the simple method okay and in this simple method then you will going to call your future method okay one after another yes. so you have to use this another method just to use another object either the setup or the non setup one in this future method just to separate its thread from the current transaction okay 
So it is okay. Same. Yes. Okay. So can you explain me the security model in Salesforce? Yeah, security model includes profiles, permission sets, sharing rules, permission set groups. Uh, security model is nothing but giving an access to the users uh, for the particular objects or for the particular records. For this, we will use sharing model. So how we will... The sharing it? model... Yes, yes, continue. In the sharing model, OWD organization wide defaults are there, permit, profiles are there, uh, permission sets are there. Like I want to uh, perform or want to make some changes for the record level access. So what are the options I have here? How I can um, check the visibility or manage the visibility for the reports? Uh, in, in OWD, if it is private, for mm -hmm. sure you need an access uh, from the profile level. Uh, correct. Uh, create, at least you have read and edit access. Uh, if you want to update the records or if you want to just to see the records, uh, you just need uh, read access from the profile level. Otherwise, uh, from permission set level. If it is private in the uh, top level, uh, OWD. But if it is public in organization, uh, OWD organization by default, public read, you are able to read the records. Mm -hmm. uh, and also you need uh, read access uh, from object, uh, from profile also. Uh, so if it is public read write in mm -hmm. organization by default, you are able to uh, read and update the records. But you have permission, you need permission in profile level access. Okay. So like suppose uh, in this case, two users are there, okay, and for object OWD is set as private, okay. But still, the both the user are able to see each other's record and also able to edit. So what can be the possible possibilities here, which is making all the users to viewing and editing all the records. And here in OWD profile, is private. In the profile, maybe there is a chance of view all and edit all. Okay. Because of that, uh, he is able to. Okay. They are able to modify the records. Okay. Any other possibility? In permission sets also, maybe there is a reason of view all and in case, in case for profile, uh, it is it's not there. Maybe there is a chance of uh, view all and uh, edit all in the permission set level. Okay. So, another, reason, another condition in, is... In the sharing rules. Yes, yes. Yeah, in the sharing rules also, uh, maybe there is a chance of uh, right, uh, owner-based uh, sharing rule. They include uh, if a owner, by using the owner-based sharing rule also, uh, others can able to view your records. Yeah. Mm. Anything related to role hierarchies? Yeah, in role hierarchy also. It uh, might be possible they are in the upper hierarchies, those who are able to view and edit the records, right? Yeah, but they have to be in the same position, right? So, for uh, like suppose if they are in the same position, okay, and if OWD is private, which means that only the they cannot be able to see each other's record if we exclude view all and modify all permissions also. But if one of them is in the upper hierarchy, he has the access to view and modify all the records of lower one, right? But for the same level, yes. it will going to respect the OWD. Okay, but uh, in the lower level, he is unable to view the top one records. Right? No, the low by default the lower one will not be able to view the uh, this upper hierarchy. Like suppose there is a manager. Manager has the access to view and modify all, all the employees or his teammates, but the teammates cannot view manager's record, right? Yes. So similarly in the lower hierarchy, the one who is in upper upper position can able to see the teammates' records, but the teammates cannot view the upper one. So it might be possible those who are able to view the records, they can be in the upper hierarchy because of which they are able to view and edit them. Okay, so what is manual sharing? Manual sharing is nothing but sharing records to the particular user uh, yeah, when OWD is in private mode. Mm -hmm. OWD uh, is in private. Okay. Hmm. And 
and if OWD is public read only, will I be able to enable this? No, I think uh, we are unable to view that button. Share. So share for button. both the settings, it, we are able to enable this for private and for read only. Okay. So they both are the restrictive ones. So for both the cases, we can enable this. What is user in Salesforce? Sorry? What is a user in Salesforce? A user is nothing but a person who is able to uh, use the data which are available in Salesforce based on the license uh, which she was uh, allotted uh, in the profile level. Uh, the profile level, we are able to modify uh, how many, uh, what are the objects he is able to, what are the applications he is able to view. Or these are the things we are able to set in the profile level for the user. Okay. Yes. Based based on the user license, user is perform able to perform the reaction. If it is charter license, he is able to perform charter kind of things. Mm -hmm. If he sells for administrative, he is uh, complete uh, access uh, for the sales for work. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are page layouts and report types? Page layouts uh, is nothing but uh, the interface. In the interface, what kind of fields we need to display? There, uh, there is an institute which is in India and US, and he, he just want to uh, for the Indian student he just want to display one pay, one uh, different types of fields, and for the US students they want to display different types of fields. So in this case, uh, they they will create two types of uh, page layouts. And for this, uh, they will create to uh, to display these page layout. We need record types. Uh, by using record types only, we are able to access these pages. Mm -hmm. So, in how many ways we can make a field required in Salesforce? By enabling the checkbox, when at the time of creation of field required, okay. we have to enable the checkbox that. First one, by using the trigger, we are able to make the field required. Mm -hmm. From the page by validation, by validation rule, we are able to make the field required. Mm -hmm. By page layouts. Yes. Actually, I don't know what page layouts. Okay, so using page layouts also, we are able to make it required. Okay, and this will be required from the UI only. Okay, if a person is ent uh, entering any record from the UI using edit page and the detail page, then the field will be required at that time. But when a person is trying to create a record using Apex, okay, then if he will not going to fill any value in this field, then it will not going to give you any error because at this time, the field is required from the page layouts only. So at the time, at UI only, you will going to get an error, not from the Apex code. But when you used to make it required from the backend, that is at the time of creation, okay, that required checkbox. If you will going to make it required from there, then in the Apex code itself, you will going to get an error if you will not going to fill a value in this field, right? So this is uh, also a difference can be asked. What is the difference making a field required from page layout and making it required from the backend? That is from time of creation. Can you tell me the difference between lookup relationships and master data? Well, the main difference was uh, if we delete the parent record in master detail relationship, the associated child records also get deleted. But we use uh, lookup relationship. Uh, if we delete the parent record, the in the child records the field uh, gets empty. That's it. The associated child records won't get deleted. Okay. Yeah, so that's a. Uh, yeah. So in master detail, once uh, like suppose uh, in this account and contact we are having, okay. So if I will going to delete this account, will its related contact also get deleted? Yeah, if you check the object level, it, it, yeah, we are able to see that uh, that they look up field, uh, but that's a special relationship. Uh, even if you yeah, if you are yeah, if you delete the account record, the associated contact records also get deleted. But I think uh, it's a special relationship, not uh, lookup relationship. Okay. We also call it as cascade delete, right? 
so they are uh, lookup yeah. related with lookup but act as master editor 